Kara was a compulsive Facebook user who participated heavily in a local community forum. She had enemies and often got into disagreements with other forum members. When the forum administrators warned her about her combativeness, she began to threaten legal action. She was a lawyer. Eventually, the administrators resigned, largely due to her ongoing antagonisms. She leveraged an opportunity to take their place as an administrator. As the forum administrator, she immediately began dominating the conversation, stirring up controversy with innuendo and gossip, and attacking people who questioned her. When she began posting angry and self-pitying comments about her marriage, people began to quit the forum. Within three months, most of the members had moved on to a new forum started by the previous administrators. Kara was allowed to join, but was put on behavior probation, which she quickly violated, leading to her expulsion from the group. Now, what I read is a quick excerpt um, labeled Online Bully when it's talking about narcissists online. What does that actually look like? What do you actually see in that? So the book I've been going through recently is called The Narcissist in Your Life by Julie Hall. So I wanted to be able to share that to be able to talk a little bit about what narcissism looks like. And in this particular context, what it looks like online. If you guys don't know who I am by now, my name is Ben Taylor. I run Raw Motivations. I'm a self-aware narcissist that's on this channel in Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. That's the reason why I'm on here was wondering if I should even post a video about like the narcissist online because again, I'm the narcissist that's online. Part of the reason why I'm on here though, besides those four things, is to be honest and is to actually try to give you insight and, and uh, perspective on what I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis or what I'm working through. Or you know, if you engage with one of my lives or things like that, sometimes hearing like, hey, this is what I've learned this week or this is what I'm going through in therapy. A lot of times people look at narcissism and they don't have a clue of what's going on and what's happening. So people oftentimes contact me asking questions, trying to get clarity, trying to get closure of understanding what is going on and understanding like the craziness that gets put on them. Typically people get stuck in a trauma bond because they've been pushed back and forth, like the constant push, pull, the cognitive dissonance, the hope and the potential that keep them waiting around for someone that's never gonna change. And sometimes people have to hear it straight. That's why the name is Raw, Raw Motivations. The reason why it's there is because I want to be raw. I want to be honest with what's going on, but I want to be raw and saying like, hey, this is happening. Like, hey, if they're not showing honest vulnerability, consistent change, you need to be leaving because they're showing you in those moments that they do not care about you. Oftentimes I have to be very blunt with people to say, hey, narcissists do not care or narcissists don't care about you or narcissists don't care about your kids. And a lot of times that's hard for people to hear. But I'm not on this channel to bring people hope that's going to keep them stuck in a relationship that's abusive or that's damaging to them. They're mental, they're emotional, they're physical. Like I'm not going to keep people in those. And so when I talk to people, I try to help work them through that. I do that with one-on-one -on -one coaching where we engage on a day-to-day -day basis and I try to help people break through the trauma bond, get out of the addictive nature of being with that person and set future goals, visions, boundaries, and barriers to make sure that they don't go back to a narcissist and they don't get involved with another one. Because a lot of times you know, like if you've been with one, you're probably gonna be with another one. Typically that's because you haven't changed the story in your mind or a lot of times because you're not healed yet. And that's what we try to focus on, healing, growth, and change on a day-to-day -day basis. If you haven't had a chance, check out some of the lives that we do. So Monday nights is exclusive inside the NARC app. Wednesday nights is um, on YouTube and Facebook, either on my channel or on Lee Mental Healness. And then Thursday nights, we're on a lot of different platforms depending on the night. Um, most of those start at 9 p.m. and go later uh, Eastern time. So we'd love to have you join and be able to engage with us there. If you haven't had a chance, download really quick the NARC app, N-A-R-C, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. NARC app. It's a community of like-minded people that are on there to try to learn about narcissism, to go through the courses, to try to learn how to be able to interact. They can ask advice on there. They can engage with the community. And the cool thing is you can join the exclusive lives that are secured and safe so that other people can't see them. It's just you, me, and we're talking about narcissism and handling different questions. Or jump on there so you can join the monthly coaching call, which we're super excited to be rolling out and just be able to engage with people, be able to see them, ask questions, be able to hear hear from other people and be able to be coached on how you're going to continue to live, how you're going to continue to grow. Anyways, the narcissist online. Okay. Reading again from this book, um, the narcissist in your life by Julie Hall. It says the narcissist online 
The intersection of narcissism and social media. It's a match made in heaven or hell, depending on how you look at it. Because narcissists survive or moreover thrive on a lot of attention, reaching innumerable people at the speed of light is irresistible. Social media makes it easy for narcissists to present idealized image of themselves and their life as well as to play the lurking attack troll for sport. So they break it down in four different ways. You've got the project, uh, projecting perfection, using others for lifestyle props, too much information, and online trolling. That's what I was reading as we started. So projecting perfection. The users of social media, by and large, want to show a good face. But nurses work overtime to garner attention and to project inevitable lives. Compared to others, they spend more time on social media, post more photos, especially selfies, and edit their photos more. They may attempt to collect large number of friends and followers, even if the vast majority are surface acquaintances or strangers, and they're likely to post images with signifiers of status to cultivate the perception that they're already living the high life. You see, for a narcissist, they want to be able to project and to be able to control the mass that they're putting out there. A lot of you have dealt with that person to person, face to face, where you see the narcissist that's trying to put an image out there that's completely false but that they want that so that other people think that they're better. In DSM-5, it reads about the narcissist wanting to be recognized as special or to associate with high-status people. And that's the concept that they think they are better than a lot of other people, their ego, their entitlement. And as a result, they want to connect with those type of people to, again, help their image and to keep that moving up. With the idea of social media, you have a lot of people out there that they are consumed with that image. They're consumed with how they look. They're consumed with how they are. They're consumed with the status that they put out there for a lot of people. And so that's where a lot of times it leads to more and more that you see narcissists being on social media because they're consumed with the image. It's a great place to be able to share it. Okay. I want to put a little note, side note. Is a lot of times you have narcissists, <clears throat> especially covert narcissists, that you're not going to see on social media or you're not going to see as flamboyant or grandiose in the idea of social media. So while some of these are ideas and thoughts about it, they're not exclusive. So please be careful. <coughs> Excuse me. Using others as lifestyle props. When the narcissist posts images of family members, those family members may appear more like lifestyle accessories or minor actors in a movie in which the image poster is the lead. Narcissist's vanity often overrides other concerns as long as they look good. They may not care or even enjoy posting image of their spouse, child, or friend that are awkward or unflattering. Conversely, narcissists may use social media to highlight their idealized partner, favorite golden child, or high-profile friend. In that case, they may display their attractive mate or impressive friend or may show off their golden child, emphasizing that child's activities, achievements, popularity, or cuteness slash good looks. The scapegoat child may be shown in a less positive light or be conspicuously absent. A lot of times you'll see how they post is they want to be able to use other people. Uh, again, going back to the image and again, going back to like even regular life, not even social media, you'll have the narcissist that'll want to use the kids to look better. You, they'll want to appear as that loving wife or that you know, caring father. Same thing on social media. Sometimes you'll see a narcissist on social media where all that's on social media is them and the kids. The partner isn't in it at all because they're trying to show an impression. They're trying to show an image to the outside world. The other one, number three, too much information. Narcissists are also inclined to overshare and inappropriately bring their relationship, family, or friendship problems into social media public forums. Because they have little respect for boundaries, they're more than likely to, to most to violate them online. Their emotional reactivity and competitive need to be right, to win, and to flaunt their superiority can lead them to act impulsively online. I lost my space. Uh, criticizing a spouse or ex or dragging their grievances about a community issue or local business into the public view. Having an extreme need for attention and a distorted view of entitlement, they are more likely to brag and otherwise display themselves ostentatiously. They are also more likely to use social media to embarrass, punish, and conduct smear campaigns about other people. A lot of times you'll see narcissists that will use online that will use social media to conduct those smear campaigns to be the form of punishment they will use that to grade degrade the other person to devalue other people to conduct smear campaigns and to otherwise show other people like hey i am a lot better than all these people out there 
and they'll do it and they'll try to prove it every single time by destroying people on social media. Again, leading into the fourth one, online trolling. Narcissist rage and desire to dominate may also lead them to play the role of an online troll, attacking community members or strangers with whom they happen to disagree or even just playful devil av advocate for the kick of it. Dominating and abusing others anonymously online can be addictive to narcissists, particularly closet narcissists, who prefer to keep their aggression and antagonism hidden. I'm sure you've probably seen this online on the different social media platforms that you've engaged with or you've seen. A lot of times you'll have online trolls that pop up that all they want to do is antagonize. They just want to get a reaction. That's really a lot of what narcissists love to do. They love to be in control, they love to control the mass, but then they love to be able to make you react. If they can make you react, then they know, hey, I'm still in control. And it plays along with the narrative that they have in their mind. So be careful. If you're seeing a lot of people out there where they're online trolling, they're sharing too much information, they seem to be using other people's as just props in their lifestyle, or maybe they're just projecting that everything's perfect, you might be dealing with traits of a narcissist.